Hi, Moz fans. My name is Cindy Crum, and I'm the CEO of Mobile Moxie based in Denver, Colorado. We do mobile SEO and ASO consulting. And I'm here in Seattle speaking at MozCon, but also recording this Whiteboard Friday for you today. And we are talking about Fraggles. So Fraggles are obviously a name that I'm borrowing from Jim Henson, who created Fraggle Rock. Uh, but it's a combination of words. It's a combination of fragment and handle. And I talk about Fraggles as a new way or new element or thing that Google is indexing. So let's start with the idea of mobile first indexing, because you have to kind of understand that before you can go on to understand Fraggles. So I believe mobile first indexing is about a little bit more than what Google says. Google says that mobile first indexing was just uh, a change of the crawler. They had a desktop crawler that was primarily crawling and indexing, and now they have a mobile crawler that's doing the, the heavy lifting for crawling and indexing. And while I think that's true, I think there's more going on behind the scenes that they're not talking about. And we've seen a lot of evidence of this. So what I believe is that mobile-first indexing was also about indexing, hence the name. So um, I think that Google has reorganized their index around entities or around specifically entities in the knowledge graph. So this is kind of my, my rough diagram of a very simplified knowledge graph. But knowledge graph is all about person, place, thing, or idea. That's kind of nouns, are entities. And Knowledge Graph has nodes for all of the major person, place, thing, or, or idea entities out there. But it also indexes or it also organizes the relationships of this idea to this idea or this thing to this thing. And what's useful for that uh, to Google is that these things, these concepts, these relationships stay true in all languages. And that's how entities work, because entities happen before keywords. This can be a hard concept for SEOs to wrap their brain around, because we're so used to dealing with keywords. But if you think about an entity as something that's described by a keyword um, and can be language agnostic, that's how Google thinks about entities. Because entities in the knowledge graph are not written up per se, or their unique identifier isn't a word, it's a number. And numbers are language agnostic. But if we think about an entity like um, mother, mother is a concept that exists in all languages, but we have different words to describe it. But regardless of what language you're speaking, mother is related to father, is related to daughter, is related to grandfather, all in the same ways, even if we're speaking different languages. So if Google can use what they call the topic layer and entities as a way to filter in information and uh, understand the world, then they can do it in languages where they're strong and say, we know that this is true absolutely 100% all of the time. Then they can apply that understanding to languages that they have a harder time indexing or understanding. They're just not as strong or the algorithm isn't built to understand. Things like, you know, complexities of language like German where they, they make really long words or uh, other languages where they have lots of short words uh, to mean different things or to modify different words. Languages all work differently, but if they can use their translation API and their natural language APIs to build out the knowledge graph in places where they're strong, then they can use it with machine learning to also build it and do a better job of answering questions in places or languages where they're weak. So when you understand that, then it's easy to think about mobile-first indexing as a massive knowledge graph build-out. And we've seen this happening statistically. There are more knowledge graph results and more other things that seem to be related to knowledge graph results, like people also ask, people also search for, related searches. Those are all describing different elements or different nodes on the knowledge graph. Uh, and so when you see those things in the search, I want you to think, hey, this is the knowledge graph showing me you know, how this topic is related to other topics. So when Google launched mobile-first indexing, and I think this is the reason it took two and a half years, is because they were re-indexing the entire web and organizing it around the knowledge graph. And if you think back to uh, the AMA that John Mueller did uh, right about the time that knowledge graph was launching, he answered a lot of questions that were about JavaScript and uh, hreflang. And when you put 
this in that context, it makes more sense. He wants the, the entity understanding, or he's, he knows that the entity understanding is really important. So the href lang is also really important. So that's enough of that. Now let's talk about fraggles. So fraggles, as I said, are a fragment plus a handle. And it's important to know that fraggles, I'm going to go over here, fraggles uh, and fragments there are lots of things out there that have fragments. So you can think of native apps, databases, websites, podcasts, videos. Those can all be fragmented. And even though they don't have a URL, they might be useful content. Because Google says its goal is to organize the world's information, not to organize the world's websites. And I think that historically, Google's kind of been locked into this crawling and indexing of websites. And, and that that's bothered it, that it wants to be able to show other stuff. But it couldn't do that because they all needed URLs. But with fragments, potentially, they don't have to have a URL. So keep these things in mind, apps, databases, and stuff like that. And then look at this. So this is a traditional page. And if you think about a page, Google's kind of been forced historically by their infrastructure to surface pages and to rank pages. Um, but pages sometimes struggle to rank if they have too many topics on them. So for instance, what I've shown you here is a, a page about vegetables. And this page may be the best page about vegetables, and it may have the best information about lettuce, celery, and radishes. But because it's got those topics and maybe more topics on it, they all kind of dilute each other. And this great page may struggle to rank uh, because it's not focused on the one topic, on one thing at a time. And Google wants to, to rank the best things, but historically, they've kind of pushed us to put the best things on one page at a time and to break them out. And so what that's created is this content is king, I need more content, build more pages mentality in SEO. And the problem is everyone can be building more and more pages for every keyword that they want to rank for, every keyword group that they want to rank for, but only one is going to rank number one. And Google still has to crawl all of those pages that it told us to build. And, and that creates this, this character over here, I think Marjorie the Trash Heap, which if you remember the Fraggles, Marjorie the Trash Heap was the all-knowing oracle. Uh, but when we're all creating kind of low to mid-quality content just to have a separate page for every topic, then that makes Google's life harder, and that of course makes our life harder. So why are we doing all this work? And the answer is because Google can only index pages, and if the page is too long or too many topics, Google gets confused. So we've been enabling Google to do this. But let's pretend, go with me on this, because this, this is a theory. I can't prove it. But if Google didn't have to index a full page or wasn't locked into that and could just index a piece of a page, then that makes it easier for Google to understand the relationships of different topics to one page but also to organize the bits of the page to different pieces of the knowledge graph. So in this page about vegetables could be indexed and organized under the vegetable node of the knowledge graph, but that doesn't mean that the lettuce part of the page couldn't be indexed separately under the lettuce portion of the knowledge graph, and so on, celery to celery and radish to radish. Now I know this is novel and it, it's hard to think about if you've been doing SEO for a long time, but let's think about why Google would want to do this. Google's been moving towards all of these new kinds of search experiences where we have voice search, we have the Google Home Hub kind of situation with a, a screen, or we have uh, mobile searches. And if you think about what Google's been doing, we've seen the increase in people also ask, we've seen the increase in featured snippets. They've actually been kind of sort of making fragments for a long time or indexing fragments and showing them in featured snippets. The difference between that and Fraggles is that when you click through on a Fraggle, when it ranks in a search result, Google scrolls to that portion of the page automatically. That's the handle portion. So handles, you may have heard of before, they're kind of old school uh, web building. We call them bookmarks, anchor links, anchor jump links, stuff like that. It's when it automatically scrolls to the right portion of the page. But what we've seen with Fraggles is Google is lifting bits of text, and when you click on it, they're scrolling directly to that piece of text on the page. And so we, we see this already happening uh, in some results. Um, 
And, and what's interesting is Google is overlaying the link. Uh, you don't have to program the jump link in there. Google actually finds it, puts it there for you. And so Google is already doing this, especially with AMP featured snippets. If you have an AMP featured snippet, so a featured snippet that's lifted from an AMP page, when you click through, Google is actually scrolling and highlighting the featured snippet so that you could read it in context on the page. But there, it's also happening in other kind of more nuanced situations, especially with forums and conversations where they can pick a best answer. The difference between a Fraggle and something like a jump link uh, is that Google is, is overlaying the scrolling portion. And the difference between a Fraggle and a site link is site links link to other pages. And Fraggles, they're linking to multiple pieces of the same long page. Um, and so we want to avoid continuing to, to build up low quality or mid quality pages that might go to, to Marjorie the trash heap. And we want to start thinking in terms of can Google find and identify the right portion of the page about a specific topic? And are these topics related enough that they'll be understood when indexing them towards the knowledge graph? So I personally think that we're seeing the build out of the knowledge graph in a lot of different things. I think featured snippets are kind of facts or ideas that are looking for a home or validation in the knowledge graph. People also ask, seem to be the related nodes. People also search for, same thing. Related searches, same thing. Featured snippets, oh, they're on there twice. Two featured snippets. Uh, and found on the web, which is another way where Google is uh, putting expanders by topic and then giving you a carousel of featured snippets to click through on. So we're seeing all of, the, all of those things. And some SEOs are getting kind of upset that Google is lifting so much content and putting it in the search result and that you're not getting the click, right? We know that 61% uh, of mobile searches don't get a click anymore. And it's because people are finding the information that they want directly in the SERP. And that's tough for SEOs, but great for Google, because it means Google's providing exactly what the user wants. So they're probably going to continue to do this. And I think that SEOs are going to change their mind, and they're going to want to be in those windowed content, in the, the lifted content. Because when Google starts doing this kind of thing for the native apps, databases, and other content, websites, podcasts, stuff like that, then those are new competitors that, that you hadn't, didn't have to deal with when your website, when it was only websites ranking. But those are going to be more engaging kinds of content that Google will be showing or uh, lifting and showing in a SERP, even if they don't have to have URLs, because Google can just window them and show them. Um, and so you'd rather be lifted than not shown at all. So that's it for me and featured snippets. I'd love to, to answer your questions in the comments. And, and thanks very much. I hope you like the theory about Fraggles.